One of the most important races in the country this year is right here in Arizona. It's who's going to replace Jeff Flake in the Senate. Joining me now is Dr. Kelly Ward, one of the candidates, and welcome back. I'm glad to be back, Mike. Great to be here with you. Right out of the gate, what is going to be the biggest difference if you win this seat between you and Jeff Flake? Well, I'm going to be a liberty-loving, constitutional, conservative Republican who is a reliable vote for the America First agenda. You know, it's interesting because um, I've been, you know, Jeff Flake decided not to run. I thought, good, he said he wants out, he's out. I've been a little bit concerned with some of the things he said since. That's kind of bothered me a little bit. And now with the Supreme Court vote coming up, as precarious as it's going to be, they're going to need that vote there. So if you go, what happens if, let's say, happens to Ginsburg is out and some of their, where's your vote on this and how does it work for you? I'm looking for a strict constitutionalist, an originalist, someone in the mold of Anton Scalia who knew that the Constitution said what it said and didn't say what it doesn't say. That's what I want. So when you look at what's happening in D.C. now, how this race is so important to so many people on both sides of the political aisle. Mm -hmm. Looking toward the race, if you come out of this race winning the Republican nomination, it's still kind of an uphill battle because your opponent has already been running for a long time and she's already uh, is out there. How do you catch up? Uh, you know, I think that we are neck and neck with her no matter what. Um, but the swamp had to play here. Uh, Mitch McConnell had to bring in McSally. Chuck Schumer had to bring in Cinema. Um, we as Republicans could have been fighting this battle since October, but the establishment wanted to have their pick rather than the people's pick. And so um, we're more than ready. People, people keep saying, where's the campaign? Where's everything going? Uh, the visible part of all of the campaigns are going to be out there in full force, you know, probably starting next week, I would say. Yeah. People are going to be so sick of political ads, they're going to say, why did I ever ask for more political ads? But um, it's coming because early voting starts in, you know, less than a month. We'll be, be voting early. Most of the people in our state vote early uh, and thank goodness people know who I am they know I have a proven conservative track record of success of results and that's what they want in Washington DC and you said if I'm the nominee we like to say when I'm the nominee I have to be in I pressure. know <laughs> so there's three of you in the Republican race right now um, the big issue right now seems to be immigration children in cages we know what the media is making of this yeah. but in the end the immigration issue is still hanging over the American people mm -hmm. where do you stand on this issue and what is what is it different about you from your opponents on the Republican side right well I, I have been all over this state believe me meeting with voters interacting with them listening to them and I will tell you that they do want to build the wall I am a big proponent of building the wall the bills that we saw just recently in the house were political shame they were basically political props for people who are in Washington to use on the campaign trail to try to mislead voters. Both of them were big amnesty bills. Neither of them had real funding for the wall. I've called on the House that before they pass another spending bill, it should include full appropriation of the money for the wall. Not a trust fund, not a reserve fund, not having this Congress try to say what future Congresses will do, full funding for the wall. Fund and build it. Then, and only then, can we discuss a permanent solution about what to do with people who are in our country illegally now or who wants to come and how many can come. We all know that in 1986, Ronald Reagan yeah. granted amnesty and then he trusted Congress to deliver on the border security piece. They didn't then and they won't now unless we do this in the right order. Border security first, talk about what to do with, with everyone else after. It leads me to my next question then because no offense, but you want to go into the Senate. Yes. Everybody knows it gets passed in the House, it dies in the Senate. What do we do in the United States Senate to stop the log jam and to get things moving through the Senate? Yes. Well, I mean, I think it's very important for our good conservative members, like Congressman Gosar, my congressman, like Congressman Biggs, who I worked very well with in the Arizona State Senate, to have partners on the Senate side, people that they can pass those balls to, that we can catch them and we can run over the goal line. It, it hasn't happened before. So I look forward to getting there and being that partner. But but I'm also going to urge Mitch McConnell or whoever the, the majority leader might be at that time to um, end the filibuster rule. The virtual filibuster has been really just extremely detrimental to our country because now senators, instead of having to stand up in front of the American people, in front of the press, and, and try to convince us as to why their ideas are better than something that might be presented, they just have to call Mitch and say, hey Mitch, I'm voting no. 
And then there's nothing on the record. They can continue to rub elbows with the Global Tuxedo Club and the business of the country doesn't get done. That filibuster rule needs to end. It's ended for judges, thank goodness. We are going to get a great Supreme Court justice, I am sure, and, and maybe more over the next few years. Um, but the wall and border security is just as important as the Supreme Court and all of those judicial nominees. So I say end the filibuster rule. As always, it's good to talk with you. I know that you are at a sprint now heading into yes. this race. So we wish you luck. And uh, moving toward November, we will be talking to you again. Yes. So thank you for coming down. Thanks, Mike. We'll be back.